I am truly sorry. How many of you have needed to hear that from your maths teacher? Today, on the behalf of myself and every other maths teacher who ever failed a student in any way, I would like to express my deepest regrets. If you weren't generously supported with kindness and taught how to persevere with maths, if your maths teacher didn't see your potential or challenge you to be better, then you weren't, you aren't, you couldn't be bad at maths. You were set up to fail by a vicious system and it can't go on. The misguided teacher that failed you probably meant well. Unfortunately, at this point, mathematics education is an ill-thought-out, multi-generational trauma machine eating its own tail. <laughs> Which is why I'd like to talk about Maths 2.0. Maths 2.0 is a safe space where maths teachers in love with the stark, complex beauty of mathematics and in love with their students, inspire them. Maths 2.0 is a safe space where every child is enabled to be successful. On the slide, can you use the information that's there to fill in some of the blanks? When you spot a pattern and use it, you are being a mathematician. Now, we're going to be using this slide to experience a little bit of interleavered learning. So, we'll be circling back to it soon. If you didn't spot the pattern yet, don't worry. A mathematician is not someone who finds maths easy, but rather one who enjoys its difficulty, is a half-remembered phrase from a talk by Ben Sparks, but the idea resonates because mastering something challenging is what drives most mathematicians. Today, my lessons are fast-paced, difficult, my expectations significantly higher than they were 15 years ago. However, more children succeed today because they feel safe enough to ask for help, safe enough to try, safe enough even to fail, and through this, confident enough to achieve. I believe that manufacturing marvelous mathematicians is easy, but only once we stop believing that some children are just bad at maths. Nobody looks at a toddler and thinks some kids are just bad at walking. I filled in a few of the blanks and we're back to this slide. Do you agree with me? Are you one of those people who's itching to finish this task now? At secondary school, I was in bottom set, or small groups for everything. Small groups are where they send the kids who can't quite cope with bottom set. So at the time, my maths teacher was a very nice PE teacher, given my class, because it was bottom set. But Miss Nobes changed my whole life. She thought I was good at maths, and she made me believe that, so I spent three years obsessively studying maths. Now, I was the best kid in bottom set, so I'm assuming I wasn't the best kid in my school, but by the time I got to the end of those three years, I moved straight from bottom set to top. I went on to take A-levels in mathematics, further maths, a degree in maths, and this is what I do for a living now. But I'm not the only case of this. About 7% of students at this school move straight from bottom set to top set or achieve top grades while still in bottom set. We are busy smashing that glass ceiling. Aged 22 and frustrated with the genuinely appalling mathematical skills of colleagues at a major bank in London, I retrained to become a teacher. Now, you might assume, given my background, that I would be good at teaching weaker mathematicians. To my shame, I was not. When I got back in the classroom, I was elitist, only interested in helping the best kids get better and indifferent to the needs of the vast majority of the students that I taught. Which is when I had the amazing good fortune to be hired by Lorraine Scott. She was my head of maths, she was an exceptional maths teacher, she is a mentor and she is a wonderful person. She showed me through the relationships that she formed with students and by guiding me in my teaching practice that every child can succeed and it's my job to help them do that. 
while we continue to believe that many children are just bad at maths, this system will continue to roll over students. I urge you to join me in breaking this horrible cycle of events and changing the story of mathematics from what it is today to one that supports every single child in succeeding at maths. My journey came full circle when I was given a bottom set. Now, they came with a plethora of complex behavioral, social, emotional, and educational needs. The students lacked any behave good behaviors for learning. They either couldn't remember something from one lesson to the next or couldn't behave from one moment to the next. But I loved them. I really did. So every single day, I would reverse engineer the content from where they should have been in year 10 to where they actually were in year 10. And then we would slowly practice until they gained the automaticity they needed to survive. The students went on to get good or outstanding GCSE results. And that was fueled by both aspiration and mutual respect. I learned that students can only succeed when they feel safe, loved, and respected. Right, the slides back in red are a few little bits filled in. Is this all right? Are you happy? Okay, so from my work with those students, I developed the lesson structure that we use today. It starts with a Mr. Carter starter. Now, I'm obsessed with that website, and if you've ever spent more than 10 minutes in my classroom, you've seen it. I then, role model, lots and lots of information, but using color and monitoring the progress in my classroom using red, amber, and green cards so that I know I'm taking the classroom with me. Lots of practice extension support follows, the lesson ends with a exam style question or a plenary. The format of each lesson is similar in order to ensure continuity and comfort for my students. Automaticity reduces distractions and anxiety in my classroom. Automaticity is a high progress learning word. It means the ability to do without thinking because you practice. Automaticity is also a word that my students are sick of hearing because I love it. So, by naming something that you, you intend to use frequently, it helps us access that tool when it's needed. Did you notice that by writing, illustrating, and repeating the word automaticity, I helped you embed it? Automaticity, the ability to do without thinking because we practiced. Despite the growing body of neurological and, and psychological research to back this up, not enough of what every teacher should know is trickling into every classroom. I hate the phrase maths is important. I really do. Maths is a tool. Things that are important, breathing, food, family, friends, sleep, but definitely not maths. Maths should not be used as a tool to torture children. Instead of asking me to set your child more homework or getting them a tutor or absolutely worst of all, making them chant times tables. Please stop doing that. Look in your child's book, ask them about their work. The ability to have a neat book, which you can use for reference and revision is the single best indicator of ongoing success in mathematics. Right, we're nearly there. I think all the gaps are gone. Now, if you didn't attempt this task, probably means that maths broke you, and I'm really sorry. Maths 2.0 is a place where this talk doesn't make any sense. It doesn't resonate because every teacher is inspirational and aspirational every single day in every single lesson with every single child. Maths 2.0 is a place where we stop hunting for
for Einstein, and instead, classrooms filled with Euler, Ramanujan, Lovelace, and Mandelbrot are nurtured into existence. They are created. Maths 2.0 is a place where every child is enabled to be successful. I don't know what your strengths and weaknesses are, but I do know that practice is the best indicator of ongoing success. Students in Maths 2.0 are passionately curious, ready to meet and solve problems that don't exist yet, because that's the world we live in. I do not know what job, career, life I am preparing my students for, so I need to equip them with future-proof competence and confidence with which they can navigate a life that I can't even imagine. Many observers react to my lesson by wishing that I'd been their math teacher, which is flattering, but also incredibly frustrating, because what it means is that maths failed them. No one nurtured them, no one looked after them, and no one supported them. So when they come into my room and see something different, they wish they'd had that too. I do not feel any need to apologize for my absolutely hideous handwriting or off-key singing voice. However, over the years, shame-faced doctors, lawyers, head teachers, parents, strangers, have come up to me and said, I'm really sorry, I'm bad at maths. Well, no, you're not. The truth is, maths is really bad to you. It was something horrible that was done to you. It's something that you suffered. And I am standing here asking you to help me change that narrative, because it's not okay. Right, we filled on all the blanks. Well done, everyone. This year, I've been working with some determined students. Now, if you're outside the UAE, determined is how we describe a student with a disability. However, determination is actually what you see in my classroom. When we started, the students were working at roughly a lower primary level. Uh, four months after they started, they were working at age-appropriate secondary levels. They progressed four years in four months. It was so moving to see the pride that this inspired in the students, in their support teachers, and in their parents. Making mathematics accessible to all has the potential to impact not just job and educational opportunities, but well-being too. What could you have achieved if mathematics hadn't been a roadblock, if it hadn't tripped you up? taking a small step sideways. We're gonna divide numbers by themselves. So two divided by two is one. Seven divided by seven is one. Nine divided by nine is one. Three million seven hundred and forty-two divided by three hundred. Three million seven hundred and forty-two is one. The pattern being any number divided by itself is one. Bonus marks if you know the exceptions. Maths and IQ have always gone hand in hand. But when you add emotional intelligence, that's the game changer. I am really, really, really sorry if maths let you down. That shouldn't have happened. But this is where we are, and I'm asking you to support me going forward and ensuring that it doesn't break more children. When I started teaching, I was desperate for the kids to like me. I was so sure that if I could make things connected to real life and I could throw a game in there maybe, make it all very fun, children would come to love my subject. But if the reason that you eat dinner is dessert, you're not gonna taste the dinner. Maybe my students would like me more if I talked to them about something except maths, but would that help them love maths? Neuroscience tells us our long-term memory is limitless. However, our working memory is limited to four or five things. However, so if I spend my lesson telling students about my favorite book, they're missing out on the maths they need to acquire. I role model the love, the focus, the attention and effort that I wish to see in my students. And they role model that back to me. The marginal gains are both significant and substantial. So we started off saying that nine divided by nine was 0 0.9 recurring, because that followed the pattern. But then we also found that nine divided by nine was one. So does that mean that 0 0.9 recurring and one are the same? 
or did one of you break maths? Many children enter my classroom with a case of mathematical PTSD where they've tried and failed and tried and failed so many times that they are broken. They are just bad at maths. It takes love, time, effort, and practice. But once those students taste success in mathematics, that battle's won. Our department has found that by loving, role modeling, and championing mathematics beauty as well as its utility, students love mathematics. They're keen to come to our classrooms. So we are slowly dismantling mathematical anxiety one child at a time. Systematic change is not exciting like revolutionary or radical change, but it is in general longer lasting. So what we found was that one and 0 0.9 recurring are the same. In class, we would check our work to make sure we hadn't made any errors or we hadn't got confused about something. But in this case, I promise you, we didn't make any mistakes. Zero, at 0.9 recurring and one really are the same. And I chose this topic because it's one of my personal favorite mathematical quirks and I wanted to share it with you today. In class, I would have spent a lot more time practicing each of the skills in turn and then everything all together and then sporadic retrieval practice would have ensured it stayed in your long-term memory. I am really sorry about the mathematical experience that so many of you had, but I'm asking you to join me in looking for a kinder maths, a more welcoming subject somewhere that allows every child to succeed. A colleague recently accused me of making students addicted to maths. Maths, that's what I said. It was said in censure, but it is my fervent hope that this school is ground zero in a global mathematical addiction.